Good evening, and uh, thank you again for the opportunity of this continuing this cooperation. And I'm very sorry, very, very sorry that we have uh, this uh, meeting now only through the web. Always I was so happy to be in Cairo, and honestly, it's a really pity that I cannot be because you know what, what ha is happening. Uh, I will uh, discuss uh, what we learn about the diabetes and COVID-19. And you will see that um, we, we really learn a lot of lessons, and not all were uh, uh, quite good. These are uh, my conflict of interest. So, what, what for, for sure, sure we, we know, know that diabetes, diabetes is, is uh, uh, one, one, one of the, of the most, most important uh, comorbidity in worsening the prognosis of COVID-19. This is just one meta-analysis, but uh, unfortunately, many, many other studies are confirming this. But I will uh, speak about what we have learned in terms of control of hyperglycemia in COVID diabetes and COVID-19, the use of anti-diabetic drugs, the role of IC inhibitors and ARBs, what about corticosteroid, hydroxychloroquine, and thrombosis? Uh, this is the first paper who show that people with uh, diabetes and uh, COVID-19, if they have high level of a very high level, the prognosis is uh, very bad. On the contrary, is well controlled and the prognosis improved. And this is the same thing you can see here what happened in the hospital of people who are well controlled for hypertension. We have also contrasting results regarding the A1C or the This is the coronal showing that before the was not important condition of the On the contrary, this, uh, this, um, what we have also learned is that not only hyperglycemia is important. But also, uh, if uh, it's important, glucose variability, meaning if glucose goes up and down during uh, the stay in hospital in people with diabetes and COVID-19, even without diabetes, this is also worsening the prognosis. And finally, the study interesting confirms that hyperglycemia is worsening the prognosis, but shows that the presence of hyperglycemia in people without diabetes is even worse, meaning that people without diabetes and hyperglycemia are prone to have a worse prognosis. So, is this really new? Are these informations new? I don't think so. For example, we already knew from this study that the A1C before the admission in ICU was not important. It was more important the level of acute hyperglycemia, the level of hyperglycemia at the admission in the, in the ICU in worsening the prognosis. As well, we know that the Glucose uh, uh, is a risk factor for a worse prognosis uh, when uh, uh, somebody is admitted to an intensive cardiac care unit. And also, it's very interesting how, that the hyperglycemia to be a risk factor, particularly for worse prognosis in people with the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. You know, COVID is affecting specifically the, the lungs. lungs. So, so meaning that, that hyperglycemia really doesn't been show to worsen the prognosis in people with some lung disease. And finally, we already have evidence 
that glucose variability is a risk factor for a bad prognosis in ICU, and particularly in people without diabetes. So at the end of the day, what we know, what is coming out in terms of how important is hyperglycemia in worsening the prognosis of people with diabetes and COVID-19, we already know. So meaning that is nothing new, just is confirming the same. And is why I have to say that at the beginning of this story, I wrote this uh, an editorial suggesting that the, a, a fast blood glucose control should be very mandatory in the case of COVID-19. And so I, 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 I regret to say that I was true that because of, that now we know that a good glucose control is also important to prevent the, a bad prognosis in people with type diabetes and COVID-19. But what about the anti-diabetic drugs? You know that uh, there was a, a, an alarm that some anti-diabetic drugs, particularly GLP-1 receptor agonists and SGLT2, could be dangerous in people with diabetes and COVID because they can increase the, um, the S S2 receptor expression, and you know this is the receptor for the link of the virus to the cells. But on the other hand, this evidence has been not any more, any, any more confirmed. On the contrary, we know that these drugs are very helpful in preventing cardiovascular disease, and, pro and also they have a, a very good anti-inflammatory action meaning that probably in diseases like COVID-19, where the inflammation is uh, playing a very important role, these drugs can be uh, not only used, but probably can, can, can be useful to prevent uh, complications. What about ACE inhibitors and ARBs? The story uh, was born because you know that uh, ACE is too inhibitor, uh, the, the S, S, uh, inhibitors and the ARBs are able to increase the expression of S2. And this is the receptor used by the virus to enter in the cells. And at the beginning of the pandemic, this paper published in a very good, as you see, very important journal, was suggesting that maybe the use of uh, as, as inhibitors and ARBs, they were being very dangerous in people because uh, the, the potential increase of AC2. Now we know that this is not true. We have several studies. These are the most important, published in New England Journal of Medicine, again New England Journal of Medicine, again New England Journal of Medicine, confirming that these drugs are not only not dangerous, but on the contrary, it, they, it seems that they are protecting against COVID-19. But you know that during this, at the beginning of this story, many people stopped to use ARBs or ACE inhibitors because of the fear of uh, uh, what was proposed. And we never will know how many deaths of cardiovascular uh, um, uh, diseases uh, this has, we have paid for this. What about corticosteroids? Oh, it's really interesting to know that at the beginning of the um, pandemic, the use of steroids was not recommended at all. On the contrary, they were, there were, uh, there was a warning to use steroids to, to treat people with the COVID-19. But, now we have, uh, this isn't the most important study, but another couple of studies already confirm that the use, the use of, of steroids, steroids in COVID-19 COVID is very, very helpful. helpful. It's it's save, it can save life. So again, something was wrong at the beginning and we learn on the way uh, that, uh, that it was not true. What about hydroxychloroquine? Uh, I think the most complicated story because uh, uh, has been very uh, a lot of the debated a lot 
because some preliminary evidence suggested the potential benefit of hydroxychloroquine COVID-19, but then two publications, one in the Journal of Medicine, only one said the suggesting that they could be dangerous. But then these two uh, publications were withdraw for serious methodological issues. And during the debate, hydroxychloroquine was uh, still promoted by media and by some well-known personalities. One of them was uh, Donald Trump, you know, that he was, uh, so, he, so he was telling that every day he was taking hydroxychloroquine. I will not go, in, I will not discuss if it's useful or not, but what do we know Hydroxychloroquine may have serious side effects, particularly for diabetes, because they can be dangerous for the heart, and diabetes specifically can increase the risk of hypoglycemia. So we must be very careful when we decide to use hydroxychloroquine in people with diabetes. And finally, what about the thrombosis? We know now that the thrombosis is the key effector of the virus. People are infected by the virus, but they die mainly for thrombosis in the, almost any organ, including lungs. But you know, this is, was very important because from the way we learned this, the use of anticoagulants is saving a lot, many, many lives. But you know how we discovered this. And also we discovered because some pathologies decide to not follow the recommendation of the health authorities. They made autopsies and they found out that the thrombosis was very important in killing the people with COVID-19. So again, something very strange, we, we, the, the, the health authorities were suggesting something that was not useful to really battle the COVID-19. Why this, this happened? My opinion is that the communication between different specialists failed. Uh, this is true at least for hyperglycemia. I checked the available guidelines on how to manage COVID-19. And you know that if you exclude some guidelines coming from experts in diabetes, no one guideline is recommending to control hyperglycemia in people with COVID-19, even with COVID and diabetes. I believe that this is uh, unacceptable and unbelievable. Then pure scientific hypothesis was considered equivalent to true evidence. This is the case of IC inhibitors and ARBs, or similarly the finding of a key pathogenetic role of thrombosis was found out because some physicians decide not to respect the interdiction to the health authorities to perform the autopsies or to limit its execution. And this is even worse, some preliminary therapeutic data were interpreted without caution. This might be applied to usable corticosteroid and oipyrosychloroquine. All this situation was also, or, were also driven by global debate in the media with excess information, much fake news, and leading around the world, conf people around the world were confused and scared. And in my opinion, this scenario outlined that facing this new COVID-19 pandemic situation, keeping in this situation, typical aspect of human behavior prevailed over the scientific consistency with some of the consequences just described. Possible solution, we need an effective communication, collaboration, and trust between all the people, healthcare professional, uh, health um, uh, patients, mass media, and you know that how, 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 how is, is the situation, situation today. So at, at the end, end of, of the day, day I, I think, think that we learn a lot this lesson, this uh, pandemic, and particularly, we learn that we need evidence-based science and decision, and not just be driven by uh, the fear or the hypothesis. We need a, a good communication, we need a very good collaboration, and overall, we need a trust 
a huge trust between all the uh, actors engaged in this uh, dramatic uh, situation that all, all of us we are living. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Antonio, for the elegant talk. Uh, and uh, any question? Yes. yes. Did you hear the question? No, sorry. Can you repeat? No, okay. He is asking, uh, as COVID is an acute illness, can we stop oral anti-diabetic treatment and, and shift it to insulin during uh, the, the illness for all patients? <laughs> no, in general, it's not needed. What I mean, the, of course, if somebody goes to emerging ICU, a serious situation, Probably you need insulin. There is no discussion. But otherwise, there is no need to stop or to change the therapy, particularly if the therapy is good. The only, the only, the only very important stuff is to pay attention to the side effects. Meaning, you know, metformin can be, can have problems if the kidney starts to have, to not function. Well, COVID can produce this. So when we have a, a signs that the drug we are using could be dangerous, then you stop. But there is no reason to stop uh, ab initio from the beginning or change from the beginning. That's good. C can I ask you a question, please? Uh, regarding, you said that uh, hyperglycemia during hospitalization for COVID carries a bad prognosis, even in non-diabetic individuals. The yes. same is true for patients with acute MI, for example, in intensive care. Is it hyperglycemia per se increases the risk for, for worse prognosis or it is a marker for severe, yeah. for severe illness? And that's why controlling the glycemia is not the main issue here. Although it is important, I agree. Yeah, no, no. Uh, first of all, I believe that uh, is uh, dangerous. And if you will see, other, there are uh, some papers already published about COVID that if you control glycemia, you improve the prognosis. There were, uh, for example, continuous insulin infusion was used in the, the paper published in Diabetes Care some months ago. So there is evidence that if you uh, control hyperglycemia, you can improve the situation. But this is also true for other conditions like uh, my, acute myocardial infarction. The only issue in the past was that you must control glycemia, but you must avoid hypoglycemia. <laughs> this is the, issue, the, the main issue. It's not if reducing hyperglycemia is beneficial. Is that you have to do this, paying attention to not induce hypoglycemia. Otherwise, clearly you damage the, the you worsen the situation. We definitely agree that controlling glycemia in any stressful situation is definitely carries a good prognosis. However, yeah. my question, uh, uh, hyperglycemia in non-diabetics reflects yeah. the severity of the illness itself. That's why it uh, can occur even in non-diabetic individual. And that's why yeah. the prognosis is bad. Exactly, and particularly for COVID-19, uh, is uh, very intriguing the fact that you have more hyperglycemia in non-diabetes that you expect. Why? Because you know probably this virus has a specific trophism for beta cells. It can also induce a specifically damage of beta cells, which together with the cytokine storm, which induces insulin resistance, is a, is a double situation which of course, of course can induce easily hyperglycemia. So what is new, in my opinion, 
in terms of hyperglycemia and COVID, it's not that hyperglycemia is dangerous, but it's so frequent, even in people without diabetes. So this is the problem. Dr. Mas? Dr. Mas? Uh, another question, please. Does the use of herbs protect from COVID infection? Herbs and geotensin receptor blockers could you, prevent you, the COVID infection? Did no, you, no you, can, you, can, you can, it's very safe. There are uh, a lot of uh, papers, particularly three papers in New England Journal of Medicine. He's not asking about the safety. He's asking, is it a protective the drug protect, against protect, COVID? The, the receptor. Uh, uh, sorry, it was, it was not It's okay. Yeah. Uh, it seems there are some signals that they can be protected. It's not confirmed in all the papers, but there are some papers showing not only that they are safe, but they, they are protected. I'm not surprised because you know the cardiovascular system is a serious damage to COVID. And particularly people with diabetes, they already have cardiovascular disease behind. So. I, and yeah, I suggest to use to use them when you need absolutely no stop. Okay, thank you.